To assign formal charge, you take the number of valence electrons in the free atom, or the number of valence electrons the atom is supposed to have, and from that, you subtract the number of valence electrons in the bonded atom, or the number of valence electrons the atom actually has in the drawing. So let's assign a formal charge to carbon in the methane molecule. Remember that each bond consists of two electrons. So I'm gonna draw in these electrons in these bonds because it's gonna make it easier for us to assign a formal charge to carbon. So to find a formal charge for carbon, the formal charge is equal to the number of valence electrons in the free atom, or the number of valence electrons that carbon is supposed to have. We know that carbon is supposed to have four valence electrons, so I could write a four here. And from that, we subtract the number of valence electrons that carbon actually has in the drawing. Remember when we drew our dot structures, all right, we knew that each bond here came from one valence electron from hydrogen and one valence electron from carbon. So I could give that one valence electron back to hydrogen and one valence electron to carbon. And so we're going to divide up all of our bonds that way, right? Give one valence electron to hydrogen and the other valence electron to carbon. Because that makes it easier for us to see that carbon has four valence electrons in our drawing. So let me highlight them here. One, two, three, four. Four. So we're going to subtract four from four. So four minus four is equal to zero. And so carbon has a formal charge of zero in methane. Let's do another example, this one down here. You can see it's different because this time we have three bonds. So let me draw in the electrons in those bonds and let's find the formal charge on carbon. The formal charge on carbon is equal to the number of valence electrons that carbon is supposed to have, which we know is four, and from that we subtract the number of valence electrons that carbon actually has in our drawing. We divide up the electrons in our bonds just like we did before, and we can see that carbon has only three electrons around at this time, so I'll highlight those, one, two, and three. So four minus three is equal to plus one. So carbon has a formal charge of plus one. So carbon's supposed to have four valence electrons. It has only three around it. So it lost one of its electrons, which gives it a formal charge of plus one. Let me go ahead and redraw that. So over here on the right, we have carbon with three bonds to hydrogen. And this carbon has a plus one formal charge. So we can represent that by putting a plus charge here next to the carbon. Notice that carbon does not have an octet of electrons around it. It has only six electrons around it. And that's actually okay. Carbon can never exceed an octet, but it's okay for carbon to have less than eight electrons. This is a carbon with a plus one formal charge. It's a positively charged carbon, and we call those carbocations. So let me write that down here. This is a carbo cation and carbocations come up a lot in organic chemistry mechanisms so it's really important to understand them all right let's let's think about the pattern that we see here all right we have three single bonds around this carbon let me go ahead and highlight them here so here's one two and three so we have three single bonds around our carbon and we have zero lone pairs of electrons around that carbon so three bonds plus zero lone pairs of electrons will give you a positively charged carbon, will give you a carbocation. What is the hybridization of this positively charged carbon? Well, there's one, two, three sigma bonds and zero lone pairs of electrons. And so from the videos on hybridization, you should know this carbon is sp2 hybridized and therefore, this carbon will have trigonal planar geometry around it. And again, that's important when you do your organic chemistry mechanisms. So carbocations are extremely important to understand. Let's look at some other examples of carbocations and analyze them a little bit too. All right, so let's start with the carbocation on the far left. The carbon with the plus one formal charge is this one in the center here. And what is this carbon in red bonded to? Well, the carbon in red is bonded to a CH3 group up here, which we call a methyl group in organic chemistry. The carbon in red is bonded to another CH3 group here and another CH3 group here. So the carbon in red already has three single bonds and zero lone pairs of electrons. And so the carbon in red has a plus one formal charge. Let's look at this carbocation right here and let's highlight the carbon with the plus one formal charge. It's this one, right? So 
So this carbon in red is bonded to a CH3 group on the left and a CH3 group on the right. So we only have two bonds here, right? We only have two bonds at this point. But we know in order for that carbon in red to have a plus one formal charge, we need three bonds. I like the example on the left. The example on the left, we have three bonds here to that carbon. And so where is the last bond? The last bond, of course, must be to a hydrogen. Right? So we draw it in here like that. So the carbon in red is bonded to a hydrogen. Usually you leave off your hydrogens when you, when you make these drawings, but it's important to understand what's actually there. We'll move on to the last example. Right? This time the positive one formal charge is on this carbon in red. And that carbon in red is bonded to, directly bonded to one other carbon. So that's one bond, but we know we need a total of three bonds. So the carbon in red must have two more bonds, and those two other bonds must be to hydrogen. So we draw in, there's one bond to hydrogen, and there's another bond to hydrogen. So it's important to recognize these patterns. Let's do another formal charge, right? Let's assign formal charge to another carbon. Let's put in our, our electrons and our bonds. All right, so we put those in, and our goal is to find the formal charge on carbon. So the formal charge on carbon is equal to the number of valence electrons that carbon is supposed to have, which we know is four. And from that, we subtract the number of valence electrons that carbon actually has in our drawing. So we, we divide up these electrons here in these bonds, and this time carbon has a lone pair of electrons on it. So how many, how many electrons are around carbon in our drawing? This time there's one, two, three, and then two more from this lone pair, so four and five. So four minus five gives us a formal charge of negative one. So carbon is supposed to have four valence electrons. Here it has five, so it's like it's gained an extra electron, which gives it a negative one formal charge. Let me go ahead and redraw that. We have carbon with three bonds to hydrogen and one lone pair of electrons on this carbon, a negative one formal charge. So we can represent that here with our negative sign next to that carbon. A carbon with a negative charge is called a carb anion. So this is a carb anion. And let's analyze the pattern that we have for our carb anion. We have one, two, three bonds. Let me write that down. We have three bonds. And this time we have one lone pair of electrons, right? So we have one lone pair. So three bonds plus one, three single bonds plus one lone pair of electrons for a carbon, right? Will give us a negative one formal charge on that carbon. We will have a carb anion. These also come up in mechanisms in organic chemistry. So let's analyze some carb anions. So down here, let's start with the carb anion on the left. And the negative one formal charge is on this carbon, which I just marked in red. So we should have three bonds and one lone pair of electrons on that carbon. Well, let's analyze it. The carbon in red is bonded to a CH3, a CH3, and a CH3. So that takes care of our three bonds. Then, of course, here is the one lone pair of electrons. Let's move on to the next example. So the carbon with a negative one formal charge is this carbon. I just marked in red. The carbon in red is directly bonded to a carbon here and directly bonded to a carbon here. So that's two bonds. I need a total of three bonds, right? Because I already have a lone pair of electrons, right? Here's my lone pair of electrons on that carbon. So I need one more bond, and that bond, of course, must be to a hydrogen. So I can draw in a hydrogen here. Again, that hydrogen is usually left off when you're drawing dot structures, but uh, it's important to realize that, that hydrogen is actually there. Finally, one more example, right? The negative one formal charge is on this carbon, and that carbon is directly bonded to one other carbon. It already has a lone pair of electrons, so so far we have one bond and one lone pair. We need a total of three bonds, so we need two more bonds on that carbon in red, and so those last two bonds, of course, must be to two hydrogens. So it's important to be able to assign formal charge and to do the math, right? It's important to be able to do these calculations, but eventually you won't need to do the math anymore. Eventually you'll be able to look at a carbon and come up with a formal charge after you've done enough problems.